at the next meeting. Uh, they were close, but they had had a little glitch, so they bifurcated a 30, it's a $35 million pot for restaurants. Wow. And it uh, has come together in, in I guess, a, a week or week or 10 days, and uh, the county commission a few minutes ago approved it. I'll give a shout out now to the, the county mayor uh, and his team, uh, Ed Marquez, uh, uh, Gary Hartfield, uh, and also uh, uh, Lee, Lee Schrager, uh, and Dean uh, Shang, Chang from uh, F FIU, but uh, it, it, it was a uh, it's a great victory, uh, and also shows what we can do when we uh, when we get together. Uh, they were quick meetings and they were intense meetings, and they kind of followed the uh, industry uh, groups that we had been on. And Wendy and I have been on a, a, I think as many as fifteen of, of these. But uh, the good news is. Uh, in a in a few days, a matter of days, uh, the county piece will uh, will launch, uh, and uh, Gary uh, Gary Hartfield is a, is a is a tremendous uh, uh, person. So it's uh, it's it's all good, you know. And uh, you know, we say at the bureau we're in the good news business, uh, and sometimes we're gonna <laughs> pick up, pick. I can I can spot good news. Uh, I run. I run from bad news, but uh, there'll be stories uh, in the press uh, about this. But uh, you know, kudos to, to Mayor Jimenez. He uh, he turned around on a dime. You know, he made an announcement, uh, and that was there was great pushback uh, by a number of folks. But then he came up with a solution, a solution, and so and within a week or ten days from uh, having to make a decision uh, to a solution. And getting the county commission to approve it uh, today—that's a—that's a record time. But Wendy, uh, thanks for your your leadership and 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 your team. And I'm always I'm leaving somebody out on these things because it goes it goes so fast. But uh, people will will get assistance that that desperately need it. Uh, and oh, and, and also uh, to connect the dot, uh, every uh, this pot of money will be shared in all 13 of the county commission districts. Uh, and the restaurant piece is basically for small restaurants. It's not, the, the large restaurants uh, are not, uh, not eligible because of Wendy's leadership. She was able to get, uh, uh, get the, hotel, uh, the hotel restaurant employees to get assistance. So without Wendy's motion, that would not uh, be part of that. But there are 13 districts. Uh, and they will be kind of divided up uh, equal because there's uh, there's lots lots of restaurants out there. But uh, you know, victory, victory, yeah. victory is a good thing. So yeah. before we get underway, I just we are under we are underway. Well, <laughs> you've been underway for thirty years. <laughs> but joining us, we uh, in addition to our Robinshire Commissioner Gladys Mizrahi, I see Sunny Isles Beach Commissioner Alex Lama, and from Sunny Isles Beach. The elusive Ibis Romero. Hello, my darling. How are you handling the tourism for the uh, Sunny Isles Beach area? And our North Miami Beach Commissioner, Phyllis Smith, is down there under Woody's pad. So now it is time. It is 2.05. Ready to start. Yes. So very quickly, we have a very um, tight program today. Mr. Talbert has to be out here by 2.45. <clears throat> Normally, I say use the chat box and I moderate, but Bill said he's a multitasker like me. He wants to take care of the chat box. He loves questions, so please fire as many questions as you can. And we're going to turn it over to our chairman, Gary Pyre, to get the meeting started. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And thank you, Bill, for the early um, information. And um, I was advised already of the today's tight schedule. So first of all, all I really want to do in these two minutes or minute that I have is welcome everybody to today's program. Um, Elaine, one distinguished gentleman, since you were mentioning um, commissioners and stuff that we uh, that we have on is the distinguished because I saw him pop in uh, Mr. Ron Silver. I saw him from his house again. So uh, Mr. Silver. Yeah. Senator, Senator Silver. Senator, Chairman, Mr. Ron Silver. Um, but really quickly anyway, uh, 
Um, I know Mr. Talbert has a lot of great stuff for us. So first of all, Bill, thank you for always being a great partner of ours and accommodating us whenever we have a program. And to that, I would like to introduce Mr. Ray, Marie, Ray Ramirez from the new Aventura Hilton, um, the new project hotel um, in here in Aventura. And I will turn it over to Mr. Ray Ramirez, our sponsor for today. So thank you, Ray. Thank you, Gary. Uh, I'm very proud to have this opportunity to introduce Bill Talbert. Uh, in the 20 plus years of, pre uh, the 20 plus year president and CEO of the Greater Miami Convention and Visitors Bureau. It was almost 20 years ago that I started my career in hospitality, leading me to my present position as director of sales for the New Hilton Aventura. But Bill Talbert has been many more years than I in the hospitality industry, always distinguishing himself as a community leader. He assisted with the passage of the United States Travel Promotion Act and the Miami-Dade County Food and Beverage Tax to fund the GMCVB's annual advertising programs. He led efforts to win and subsequently host five Super Bowls, including Super Bowl Live in 2020, the NFL Centennial Celebration. Oh, wow. Throughout his tenure, Greater Miami, the beaches have consistently posted record-breaking visitor numbers, expenditures, and tourist-generated taxes. In 2019, we had 24.2 million visitors generating an economic impact of $18 billion and employing a record 146,800 people. And when COVID turned our worlds upside down, Bill and his team created a whole host of programs that helped the hospitality industry and the thousands upon thousands of people employed in those industry. Miami Shines is a tourism recovery program and we're proud to have Bill Talbert leading the way. Once again, Bill, welcome. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. I'm uh, multitasking and uh, uh, thank you all. I want to give a shout out for, for Ibis. Ibis is the uh, newest member of the U.S. Travel Association Board of Directors. Uh, and that's, a, that's an elite group that's uh, leading, uh, leading uh, our country. So Ibis, thank you for your, uh, your partnership. In fact, we have a, uh, I think we have a virtual board meeting coming up. So thank, thank, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot, a lot's been happening. Once again, you know, we're in the uh, in the good news business. And if you look at the, the title today, uh, it's Miami Shines, and uh, this is day one twenty two, safer at home. Uh, you know, we uh, and, and basically here here's a message. You know what, folks? The reason I'm serious. The reason uh, the restaurants were closed, the reason all these folks were, were closed, the reason there is a curfew, because nobody's doing this. Nobody is doing this. Does anybody have a mask there? Huh? Yeah, there's Elaine. Okay, anybody else? Ron Silver has a mask? But, this is the reason there's a curfew at 10 uh, when there's all these closures because we collectively have not been doing this. And that, that's a simple fact. We all got comfortable, uh, I guess in the first week of June or whatever, when uh, I guess it was interpreted that uh, things were fine. They're never fine. This is a, a pandemic. Uh, I think the best way I've been taught about this is and when you go out, you need to look at every single person as having the virus. If you assume that, that's the, that's the way to get around. So, you know, we have a, a bit of a phrase, mask up to open up. That masked up to open up. So if, uh, you know, it's just, we just got to do it. If not, if not, you hear. Now, Mayor Jimenez was on uh, the county, on their still, county still meeting. Uh, said earlier today, they are not, he has no plans to shut down. Shut down. You hear about, oh, the shutdown. Now, if things get worse uh, and the hospital get overwhelmed, uh, we'll have to do that. But, you know, the umbrella program of Miami Shines, it's uh, a, the glimmer has, has lo lo a little bit, but we all know, everybody here is in business, that uh, the world loves Miami. Uh, and I want Ray Ramirez, get that hotel open. How does this sound? The Hilton Aventura of Miami. That sounds really good. 
and that's Hilton Honors, uh, and it's in your community. And uh, Ray, uh, thank you for your part. You're a member, a partner with the Bureau, and we're gonna fill your hotel up. Get it open, and then you know, get my room, my little room, get my room ready. Yes, for so, sure. So, I mean, a lot of good things happen in your, your area of the, of the community. You've got uh, just, just a few days ago, your Greater Miami Convention Visitors Bureau, a part of our, our marketing side, uh, led by Rolando, pivoted to a program called Miami Spice to Go. Now you see on my, go to gmcbb.com, those who have computers, uh, Ron has a, a fax machine, but if you have a computer, uh, go look at our website, gmcbb.com, and look at, within a few days, this is the thing about virtual space now. Uh, everybody knows about Miami Spice. Uh, we started Miami Spice the 1st of June, moved it up two months, it's August and September. And so we launched uh, the Miami Eats program. And if you look at our website, you can go down to Miami Eats and Miami Spice, and you can, you can sort it uh, by community. So what does your bureau do when there are issues? Uh, we, we got the best talented marketing team on the face of the planet and come up, come up with programs. So right today, with, this is only a few days old, Miami Spice to go. And also Miami Spice al fresco. And of course, Miami East still, still lives. Now, we, we pivoted, uh, remember 122 days, uh, uh, everybody knows about Miami Spice. When we created Miami Eats, we said the rules, we're not going to have any rules, no rules. Uh, so if you have takeout and delivery in, a, in your restaurant, uh, you can join the program. And uh, what we had done in the past uh, for Miami Spice, you were required to be a member, partner, and you were required to pay a fee. Because of the pandemic, uh, and the need to help our community, help our uh, businesses, and help people get to work, we said, you don't have to be a member, and you don't have to pay a fee. Just show up. So we're, we're proud of that, and uh, there are uh, employees and businesses open today because of the Miami East program, and now in this bridge, Miami Spice to go, uh, who knew, and then Miami Spice al fresco, and so, Miami Eats today has 1,300 restaurants. We started with 360, 1,300 restaurants, and they're all over the community. They're all small restaurants. They're all, I wouldn't call them mom and pop, but you know, our community, uh, Aventura Marketing Council, thank you, Elaine, for your leadership, made up largely of small businesses. We were all small businesses. We're all small businesses. That's right. So it's a uh, other good thing. I mean, clearly the Aventura Mall expansion is going forward. Wow, what a, what a great, you know, uh, you know, retail is gonna change uh, and we don't exactly know how, but I believe shopping malls will continue. Uh, and then the uh, JW Marriott uh, Miami Turnberry Resort and Spa, uh, now 700 rooms. Uh, and then the Tidal Cove Water Park, I mean, all, you know, it's all about infrastructure in your community, infrastructure. And I remember the old days in Aventura, I think it was like a swamp, a swamp. There was nothing. Remember George Berlin and others? Ron, you remember George Berlin? Yeah, and visionaries who took chances and invested. And look, look at Aventura today. You've got cities, you've got leadership, you've got businesses, and also, as a result of that, that uh, evolution and expansion and becoming this region of an important region of our community, uh, uh, Virgin Trains is gonna have a station at the Aventura Mall right there. And that's been approved, that's gonna go forward. So, you know, uh, in, in, in uh, destination today, it's about transportation. So we, yeah, we've had some uh, transportation issues uh, but that uh, Aventura uh, stop on Brightline or Virgin, that will start again, uh, will connect uh, and bring more customers uh, to and from uh, Aventura uh, going forward. And that, that project uh, was approved by the county 
And uh, so that that's all good. So uh, with that said, I'll take some some questions. We've got our, our convention sales team here and uh, the uh, JW Marriott Miami, JW Marriott Miami Turnberry Resort and Spa, you know, 700 rooms. We had the, uh, uh, I think we had the uh, black journalists there and it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful space, beautiful space, the golf course, shopping, near airports. Uh, and so uh, that's kind of a beacon with, uh, I mean, uh, one of the top uh, shopping destinations uh, and uh, high speed rail outside out the door. So people are gonna still have meetings, you know, they say meetings are dead. You know, uh, every time something happens, they try and kill meetings, but face-to-face -face meetings. Now it may be a combination, maybe like the school stuff, uh, a combination of face-to-face, uh, uh, -face, but uh, I, I still am bullish uh, on, uh, on that. So uh, you mean to just look at questions here on the chat line? Uh, good, uh, future conventions, okay. Uh, and maybe Sonia can, can jump in. We have, uh, I think the best news I've heard lately, and then Sonia can jump on my neighbor, mm -hmm. uh, is the recent announcement by Art Basel, I think within the last week, they are coming to Miami in December. And that wasn't speculation. They have a new uh, deep pocket investor uh, and uh, they very much uh, want to have that event in the first week in December. Uh, that's that's the best news we've we've had in a long time. Sonia, do you want to hit the meeting side? Sure. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Mr. Talbert. Uh, in terms of the group uh, group business and citywide coming for the remainder of the year, uh, the ACF at the convention center has been extended till September with an additional 30-day extension. So that prompted a lot of the uh, groups that were supposed to meet in September, October. They have um, made some adjustments, some have postponed. So currently uh, in October, we, we have uh, two that postponed, and, uh, but we're looking forward to November. Um, we had a conversation with Cruise World yesterday. Uh, they are still optimistic about coming in, in November. And uh, we also have the World Trade Food uh, Show is still on. Um, Tissue World is still on, Our Basel, of course. So those are the shows that we have for the remainder of the year. And the good news is uh, a lot of our customers that uh, couldn't come early in the year, they have postponed. So we appreciate those repeat business. And they're, they're uh, uh, I can tell you, I know this, Sonia uh, and the, the team, both on the meeting side and the leisure side and the media side, they're talking to the customers, past, present, and future, every single day, showing them love. We want you back. And we all know, uh, we all know, uh, everybody loves Miami. Yeah, and love I it. want to also, to piggyback on Mr. Tauber's comment on, yes, we are speaking with customers on a daily basis, and we have uh, produced quite a bit of virtual site inspection for some of our group business. Uh, tomorrow, I actually have customer flying into town. I have one customer flying from DC, uh, organizing a meeting for next year in April. Uh, so there's, there's good news. And even though some of the cancellations, but we still have uh, good traction with our customers. Let me take a shot at this uh, cruise question. Uh, you know, we are, Miami is the, when I say Miami, it's this whole wonderful place, a whole wonderful place. Uh, Greater Miami and the beaches. Uh, you know, we're the cruise capital of the world, always was and always will be. We brought that phrase, we own cruise capital of the world. Now, it's absolutely clear that the cruise industry, you know, is being very challenged. You know, they're a tight space. Uh, and so they've uh, formed, uh, I know, uh, uh, Royal and NCL, I think, have just put together some medical group. Uh, and you've seen uh, Carnival announced they're going to be stronger, leaner, and meaner. Uh, they're going to uh, sell some ships, and so. But uh, and, and they have great future sales. And there are ships. I look at it. I have an app for that uh, in Port Miami every day. Uh, but there's no customers. And remember, last year there were over six million customers for the cruise industry. 
the cruise industry is one of the biggest purchaser of hotel rooms in a community every year. We just know we kind of, I won't say we took it for granted, but maybe we took it for granted. And a lot of it's downtown, but that gives you compression. And so, and they've been, you've seen the terminals they're building out there. The first, uh, that's, the, that's the only development in the world like that. Royal Caribbean spent $250 million on a new terminal. It's open, it's working. And the largest cruise ships in the world, they were built for that terminal. They're billion dollar assets, billion dollar assets. So uh, I think the cruise industry uh, will, will start cruising again when they solve the, uh, uh, the, safe, the, the health issue. They help, and they, are, they have not solved it yet. And so, uh, and, and you know, I'm, I'm a big cruiser. Uh, and that's uh, when they solve that. And they, these are a lot of bright people. There are a lot of bright people. Uh, and they'll, they'll figure this out, but right now they haven't figured it out. So, and when will they figure it out? It's kind of like people ask me, when will we get, when will we get out of this? So, you know, I know we will, I just don't know when. Uh, the cruise uh, industry will get out of this. We just don't know when. Remember, a lot of bright people, a lot of bright people. But uh, I don't have any answers there. They're 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 slimming down, uh, and probably the ships that they're, that they're selling, uh, I think, are the older models. You know, it's kind of like in sale, the older models that uh, are begging to to go in something because the new the new if you call them mega ships, I mean. They have 10,000 people, including staff. They're billion dollar assets. So uh, they're clearly some, some older models that uh, you know, have seen better days. And I've, I've sailed on those too, but uh, uh, I think uh, they'll figure it out. They just haven't figured it out yet. So let me see if I can get more questions. Rolando, welcome. I gave Rolando a nice shout out on the uh, pivoting on Miami Spice to go. Uh, Carnival, uh, sea uh, trade. I think one thing is uh, is up in the air. Uh, remember, we're a big event town. Always was, we'll always will be. We had our record 11th Super Bowl on February 2nd, uh, 2020. Uh, and then our next big event is a college football championship. That's scheduled for uh, March... 11th, 2021, I think a week after the Orange Bowl. So I think right now nobody really knows how, uh, how football is going to be. You see some of the conferences are saying we're just going to play conference, but then we would still have a, a, a championship. So that's, uh, uh, that's definitely up the, in the air. We're still planning on having the uh, college football championship uh, at, uh, uh, at Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, you just, we all, we all follow this kind of like the schools, the schools going to open, how they're going to open, uh, how's the football going to be. And so that's, that's one thing we just, we just don't know. So there, you know, and a lot of the stuff, uh, they're just more questions and answers. And, and, you know, Wendy's on, on this call and, uh, and all the calls we've had at the County, these industry calls uh, with Mary Jimenez and, uh, this has been, I mean, lots and lots and lots, Saturday, Sunday, early, late, early and late. And uh, there was always medical staff on there. There was Dr. Marty. So we had uh, a balance of industry and medical. And so, and there were some really, uh, really good discussions that happened there, but you had to pay attention and, you could only do them on Zoom because sometimes there were there were 50 folks and there were there were good outcomes. I'll give you an example of a good outcome. Wendy will support this. Uh, originally, remember the whole thing for restaurants indoors was going to limit it to 25 percent. That ended up being approved for the rest of the state outside of South Florida. And our restaurant tours, we were on those calls, says you cannot open with 25 percent inside. It won't work. And so uh, there were some restaurateurs I just said, that said, listen uh, to the doctor, will you come to my restaurant and let me show you? And you know what? Doctor said yes. And so uh, the new, the word was 50% inside and 50% outside. And so at the end of the day, 
for, uh, for Miami-Dade County. It was 100%, 50% inside. And then many of the cities, many of the cities then figured out how to have more outdoor space. Now, why have they closed the restaurants inside? The, what they have said is not because they were sinners, because uh, if you're in a restaurant and eating, uh, there's no way to be in a restaurant and eat and have your mask on. Uh, you, could, you can do it outside, because you you know you can take it on and off in your outside, but in that closed space, that's what did it. Closed space. So it's uh, there. You go. Of course, the bars haven't been open, but there were good things about the hotel pools, and so uh, so a, a, a lot of things. And but I, I will tell you that uh, Wendy and I are at the table because uh, if you're not at the table, you may be on the menu, uh, and so. Uh, why are gyms still open? Somebody's asking. Uh, I think, uh, I don't, when do you know about the gyms? Hi, you, everybody. Uh, they, they are still open and I, I, I don't agree. I don't think they should be. You know, I just don't, I just, that's for me, it doesn't make sense. Just don't quote me on it. I don't know if there's a gym owner here, but I just think well, it, it's, I just think it's, it's not the right time for them to be open. Well, you can look at me and see I haven't been to a gym in a long time, so it's, that's why I wouldn't know it. So it's, uh, let's see, any other, uh, any other questions? Uh, you know, we all got to, we got to follow the rules. Put your mask on, uh, uh, distance, wash your hands, you know, and these are habits you just got to, you just got to, you just got to stay on. And so there's so, a couple questions prior to the gym that you might have skipped. Um, if you look before the gym question, there's two questions prior to that. Uh, the international market, is that the one? Yeah. Uh, internet, obviously, uh, in, in, in terms of business coming back, uh, it will be the drive, the local drive market, whether it's staycation, uh, vacation in your own backyard, South Florida, Florida, and even all the way drive all the way up to uh, to Atlanta, that drive market is is there. And then as the airlines add more service, and they are, American is slowly adding service, then uh, we'll get some uh, non, uh, uh, non drive markets, but you know, the international markets, some of them, uh, you know, uh, we don't let them in and they don't let us in. Uh, so that's a, you know, a, a lot. So the international market is gonna, is gonna be the, the, the longest to get back. But once again, we know Miami's magical. At one time, uh, when this, before this, and we'll get back to this, Miami International Airport was the only airport served by more than 100 airlines. We were up to 109. Nobody had 100. And we'll get, we'll get back to that. MIA's got these new terminals. Uh, it's, it's spotless. And, you know, that, that will happen. It's just going to uh, it's just going <laughs> to take time. The airlines themselves are challenged. You see what's happening to Boeing. Boeing is challenged. They have a 737 MAX. And so there's a lot of stress uh, on the industry, what us as people, us as families, us as a destination, and these businesses. Uh, and, you know, and the U.S. government is stepping in, which is us, you know, to help, help industries. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the airline industry is, is too important both to travel and to commerce, and to commerce, whether it's the belly uh, or cargo. And that's, uh, you know, we're the, we're the uh, fresh flower capital of the world. And there's a whole big terminal at the airport jobs uh, uh, for, for those, uh, those fresh flowers. So I hope that international is clearly gonna be, clearly gonna be the last, only because it, <laughs> they're the last to, have, to get probably air service. Is that what you were talking about? I'm looking at the, any other, any yeah, other There's questions? a question from Elaine Bell. I just sent it to you privately. Oh, I love the private stuff. <laughs> yeah. Elaine, Elaine, I will waive my fee. That's correct. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, the, uh, Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, if you know anything about the movie program, the driving movie. Uh, program that they well I get I get their uh, uh, I get their uh, social media seems like every day and it looks like I've seen on on TV uh, uh, 
I don't, I, I, I don't think the uh, outdoor, has the outdoor movie stopped? Anybody know? Anyone know? No. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. Move on. Anybody been to the uh, drive-in movies out there? I, I mean, I don't know about you guys. I grew up with the, those drive-in movies and the little sound box that went in your car. And uh, those were the, you know, the good old days. So is shutting down the rentals helping or hurting? Well, clearly, thank you, Woody, uh, privately. Uh, some of the centers, uh, you know, aren't, aren't hotels, but some of the, I'll use the Airbnb, the party houses. These party houses are just killing us, are just killing us. So uh, I know the, the county, I, I follow a lot and they're, they're coming down hard on, on the Airbnb party houses. I think further restricting the age of who can, who can uh, rent them. So it's uh, clearly, and then you see these uh, COVID parties. To, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I know I was young, but I guess I hope I wasn't that crazy, but uh, uh, Airbnb is important. It's an important market. I think that we all work together. Uh, Woody is Phyllis Smith. Okay, Phyllis. Okay, fine. Uh, so it's, uh, but you hear about airplane hangars and warehouses, uh, and, and these are just, uh, Hard Rock still has a movie program. Just check their website. There you go. There you go. Has anybody been to the movie? Anybody raise your hand? <laughs> Sounds like a cool, I mean, I guess it's kind of a, a family thing. So let me see else. Uh, uh, Rolando, are you on? I am. You want to uh, jump, jump in here and uh, fill in yep. all the stuff I didn't mention? Well, Bill, you've covered a lot of ground, and, and, and I, I was having some challenges early on, so hopefully anything I say won't be overly redundant. But, um, you know, we, when we launched our Miami Shines recovery campaign on June 1 when the hotels reopened, and, and, and candidly, there was some momentum there. We were seeing a couple of points of occupancy increasing week over week, and, and, and there was some genuine optimism with July 4th uh, weekend being – what a lot of folks had anticipated it to be. And then, as we all know now, the beaches were closed. Uh, you know, I just got off the phone with um, one of our key hotel partners. He operates several properties, both on the beach and in downtown. And unfortunately, even though the beaches were closed temporarily for that weekend, there is still that residual effect that he feels they're still, you know, they're still feeling uh, last week and even this coming weekend. So what the Bureau what the Bureau is doing this week, and Bill, I apologize if you mentioned this already, but in light of the media storm that's out there positioning Miami as this capital, this pandemic, our, our video crew is out there literally uh, uh, interviewing guests at hotels, in their lobbies, by their pools, um, uh, traveling responsibly. And, and that really is, you know, to Bill's point, you know, our, our emphasis is, you know, we welcome guests that want to enjoy our community, our hotels, our restaurants, to whatever extent possible. Rolando, but, Rolando, this, yes. is a, this is for Elaine, this is the Aventura Marketing Council breaking news. This is breaking news. So keep going. Breaking yeah, news. So, so we're going to be reaching out through, through Elaine because, you know, we're, we're trying to get to as many establishments as possible. Primarily hotels, but not exclusively hotels. Uh, obviously, there's some great establishments in the Aventuria area because we feel that showing people, you know, guests, visitors from not only drive markets, as Bill mentioned, but you know, we were at the we were at a hotel yesterday, and there was guests from Brazil there. How they got here, I don't want to know, but they, they got drove here. They drove here. <laughs> they, so so, and, and we're showing what not only what the hotels and the protocols that they're doing. Um, but also the guests and what they're doing. And of course, that starts with wearing the mask, as Bill had mentioned, the social distancing. Uh, and, we, and we feel that will be one way that we can counteract not all, but some of, of this you know, mis, misinterpretation of media that's out there. Another, you know, you've, you've all unfortunately have seen a lot of the news coverage. There's a lot of coverage talking about how we are building this uh, this hospital at the Miami Beach Convention Center. Folks, 
that hospital, which of course is an alternative care facility, that's been in place for many, many months now. Uh, that's not being built right now because of the surge. And, never, and by the way, never used. And it's never been used. Um, and hopefully won't be used. But of course, the media is now using that and they're broadcasting from in front of the convention center that because of this current surge, we are now building that facility, uh, which is factually incorrect. It's been around for many months now, but we all know the power of media, the power of PR, and that's why we launched this video series and we welcome your recommendations and your suggestions and especially working in close partnership with Elaine at the AMC to what are some of those places, hotels are obvious, shopping places and others that we can document regular people having, you know, following precautions and doing so and still enjoying our amazing, amazing destination. So that was a quick update I just wanted to give to uh, to all of you. But any ideas breaking news our way. Uh, Ron Silver has a question. Yeah, uh, Ron. So Senator Silver has a question. Oh, oh, he's he's sending it to me privately. Oh, Senator, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm a little slower than you know people. I'm uh, at a different age than you know. Uh, so you you Fox you Fox <laughs> takes me a little bit longer to get where I need to be. Silver uh, Fox. <laughs> First of all, I want you to know, Bill, that. Uh, I advised my son and Carol Dover that uh, we were going to be on today. Yeah, they're over in Tampa right now, so uh, I don't know if they're coming on or not, but I invited them on <laughs> just in case. Um, what are we doing with the hospital situation? You know, that is a very difficult uh, issue right now. That's all we see is the hospitals are uh, at capacity and all that. And how would that affect our convention business coming in and the people from up north that are coming down for the uh, fall and the winter uh, that want to visit us. Uh, that may have not virus conditions maybe, but just regular heart conditions or whatever, and might be worried about uh, getting into a hospital. Well, Carlos McGoy has been on the county call all, all day long, and I'm just looking over, over to the side. I mean, it's uh, in some, I guess, some Miami, Miami Dade patients are going into, into Broward, but the reason you're going out there is because there are centers, a lot of centers. Uh, they're not, they're not, this is not coming from Mars. It's coming because of centers. So whether, and they've been exposed to centers, uh, but if people don't do this, uh, now Carlos has said, uh, and the mayor has said, we're not looking at a shutdown, but if things get work, worse, you know, worse, you've seen it in other places, they don't want to shut down. They don't want to shut down, but, uh, and you know, Carlos is, you know, you've got um, uh, nurses uh, from the state uh, and Carlos is, uh, we all know Carlos McGoy. He's the most capable guy in this town and whatever he says, you can take to the bank. Well, he's a former banker, but it's, uh, unless, unless we all collectively do the right thing. Uh, and it's, uh, it's maybe how we message when we, we you know, when, uh, when uh, the restrictions were lifted, you know, people said, oh, it's, everything's fine now. Right. They're not fine. They're not fine. It is, it's a pandemic, it's out there. And so maybe this is the second and the, this county commission meeting started uh, at 9.30 this morning is, is still gone. Special meeting to uh, allocate some of this CARES money. Uh, but you better, you better hope your hospital's here uh, and uh, and the hospitals are meeting and they're all together and the doctors together. And, and there's another business reason for the hospitals and you've seen it. The hospitals, uh, they need to make money. Right. They need to make money. And so uh, when, when they say uh, they're going back to do some elective surgery, uh, that's, that's to pay the bills. That's to pay the bills. And, and also, you know, um, it's maybe elective surgery is not the right, but if you don't do some of that elective surgery, it gets worse later. I, I was just thinking, um, Bill, that first of all, I meant to, to say to everybody that you've been around for a long time and you've been doing an excellent job uh, for all those many years promoting our, our area. So we were very thankful for that. And uh, I just think that maybe in the messaging that you're putting out about the hotels and all that, that you have a little piece in there about uh, the hospital situation 
if you can make it, you know, positive. Okay, Rolando, you got that? Got that, thank you. Close to, close to hospitals. Thank you. I'm not, uh, okay, close to hospitals. I guess that's, uh, you know, uh, that, that's good. That's good. And Ron, you're still, Ron, Senator, you're looking great, by the way. I love your thank background. You. Uh, <laughs> I always have. So, I always have. Yes. But this is a this is a serious thing. We will get out of it. We just know, don't know when. Uh, and uh, thank God for the overall U.S. government, you know, to provide all this money, these trillions of dollars. Uh, what are a few of your local leaders going to national pro? Yeah. Here's a. You know what? Uh, here's a question from. Uh, Privately, what influence do you have on our local leaders going on national programs with negative instead of positive news? Uh, I have no, you know what, I have no, uh, no power over them. I mean, and you know, they're fighting. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, what we're doing is we're staying in our space. You hired us to bring tourists here, meetings and conventions and uh, big events. And that's what we do. And that's and to work with the industry, work with our partners, and get customers here. Why are customers important? Because they spend money and they support jobs. So that's the space uh, that we, we we go in. I can't control uh, what the elected officials any better than I can control what my wife says. You know. So I know you have to go in a couple minutes. No, I'm, um, I'm okay. I, I okay. got. Uh, okay. I got, I'm, I'm okay. I've got, uh, my whole staff is here, so. Okay, good. But, uh, I mean, uh, we just got to, and, the, you know, you see other places, they, they'll they shut it down, and so that's possible. They took it off the table this morning, both Mary Jimenez and uh, uh, Carlos Magoya, uh, but the, if, if, it is, if it gets worse, the only solution, uh, nobody wants to do it, it's, it's ugly. It's ugly, but uh, I mean, we have a there's a safety a safety a safety issue. Uh, it's it's that it's that simple, and it's uh, that's why once again, when Wendy's on the call, uh, every meeting we had uh, on these industry uh, groups, there was a medical doctor and a, a Florida Department of Health representative and a League of Cities representative, as a matter of fact. Every single and a county commissioner. Dennis Moss was designated. So uh, I have a question, uh, announcement of the uh, next Aventura Visitor Center in partnership with the GMCBB. Aha, uh -huh. aha, uh -huh. we've been outed. Rolando, you wanna you have some breaking well, news? We're doing it, we are approved. Are yeah. we already working on it? Yeah. yeah. We are, we are, and thank you again, Elaine. Uh, you know, our partnership goes back a long, long time. It actually precedes me at the Bureau, and I've been here 25 years. Um, you know, we, we really, under Bill's leadership, we've made a concerted effort to support amazing organizations like AMC and others to help establish more visitor centers throughout our community. I know it sounds old school, folks, but people still seek out places, uh, local places that know their neighborhood the best where they can engage someone pick up printed materials. They're not gone. They're still around, thankfully, for some of us. Um, and, and especially in light of what was said earlier, yes, our international guests may be on pause, but international guests, generally speaking, uh, which make up a huge portion of our visitors, are looking, you know, they don't have those international data plans. They want to go someplace, pick up materials, get some local guidance. And, and yes, we will be, hopefully, I know we've We've uh, we will be opening up in partnership with AMC a, a visitor center up in the uh, Aventura area. I know our teams are working on that, right, Elaine? Oh, absolutely. Ask Gladys about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and I think Julia from the city, so it's going to be located at the government center. Yeah, and 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 we've got there's about twenty one different visitor centers that we collaborate with, we support. We provide the materials at no cost. We, uh, we assist by co-branding the space to make it inviting and engaging. Um, and, and you know those things are as viable as ever. And, and quite frankly, it also provides an opportunity for that part of our destination to get some great exposure. Because once you're a visitor center, then you are baked into everything that we do on our websites and our publications and our social media. 
So that'll drive some additional foot traffic to that part of our community. So thank you again for that partnership. We look forward to cutting the ribbon soon. High tech, high tech and high touch. Uh, Rosetta representing Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association and our good friend, Carol Dover, you want to uh, speak on behalf of, I mean, Carol Dover is a, a rock star. Uh, any, anything that's going on in Tallahassee uh, has, her, uh, has her name on it. You want to say anything on behalf of Carol Dover? Unmute, unmute. Yes. Hi, how are you? Um, I was actually going to write and just encourage everyone to support the CBB and all the organizations that are working so hard to keep restaurants and hotels open, profitable, and safe. So um, we've been doing the same thing, working with our uh, local DMOs, with uh, working with the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Hotel Association. I think it's really, really us working together. It's grassroots efforts, it's working on the government side and the guidelines and, and uh, regulations and compliances, but it's also making sure that the industry and the local community is on board with us. But um, no, thank you so much. I know that Carol would have been here if she wanted, if she could. Elaine and I are good friends. I'm friends with a lot of people here from my uh, Gulfstream days, but I'm happy to be here. Great to hear you. Would you let Carol know that uh, Senator Silver and Bill Talbert mentioned her many times, so. I will do that, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's all, it's all about partnerships. None of us are doing this alone. You know, let, let, me just, let me just lay out something here. If, uh, if there's some idea, some thought you have that you, that you didn't share here or you think about it later, just email me, talbert at gmcvb.com. Talbert, T-A-L-B-E-R-T -E at gmcvb.com. It comes directly to me. I look at it uh, and, uh, and I'll respond or text me my cell number 305-794-5418, texting purposes, 305-794-5418. If you got an idea, something you think we're doing great, something you think we could do better because we're, it's all about, it's all about partnerships. Nobody's, Nobody's going alone. Anybody trying to go it alone is going to be an orphan, an orphan. Right, Elaine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, Ray, and Ray, we can't wait till the Hilton Aventure Miami opens and we can have our first uh, social event there. Awesome. Awesome. You know, Ray mentioned to me last week that they're getting, they, they need this information about, you know, the community and everything that's going on because they're getting a lot of requests. Right, Ray? For 21, 20, we are. 21, 21. As far out as 22, um, a lot of social right now, but, but we're, we're, still, we're still getting requests, which is great. So, um, you know, especially because of the size of the meeting space we have for weddings, et cetera. So quite a lot, so we're happy about that. Hey, don't forget, mask up to open up. Mask up to open up. All right, mask up to open up. We got <laughs> let's it. go, let's go, team, let's go. You're on it. Try it again. You're on it. Let's close out with this. Close out. Everyone on it? All right. Is our chairman there to close us out? How about that? Hey, I am here with my mask on. I follow Mr. Talbert. You know, this, is for, this is for our grandma or grandpa or this Wait is for our family. We are the grandmas and grandpas. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> we are? We are? Oh my God, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna take a screenshot. Go ahead, keep going. <laughs> All right, so on behalf of the uh, Aventura Marketing Council Chamber of Commerce and our partners here, obviously we'd like to thank Mr. Talbert and his entire staff that participated in today. And thank you, Ray, as always, Ray Ramirez, from our newest partner here in the city of Aventura. Ray, thank you for your sponsorship and working with Elaine on behalf of uh, helping us put this program on today. And it's uh, just a couple minutes before three. We thank Mr. Talbert and his team for staying on late with us. I will turn it over to Elaine or Michael, and that's it. But thank you, everybody. As Bill said, be safe. Elaine? All right, you're all going to get the uh, video recording. <coughs> Excuse me, Bill, I'll send it to you. You can send it out to your team. Thank you. So, uh, we can listen to this over and over again and be motivated. 
by doing the right thing and moving forward and knowing that good days are ahead. Yeah. Cover up, open up. I like that, Bill. Yeah, I stole it from somebody else. I, it's yeah, not... that's okay. We'll steal it from you. No, mask up, mask up to open up. Mask up to mask open up. To open up. <laughs> I forgot uh, who told Thank you, to everybody. Me. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, all. Bye. 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 Bye.